Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special Muppet Monday episode. I am Adorkable Rachel, and to my side here is a very, very talented performer. A lot of you know him as a very, very popular Muppeteer, but also you may be surprised. He's also worked with a lot of other projects. He's worked on Jurassic Park 3. Yes. He has worked with Pixar. Yes, that's true. He's also a director and a builder. Everyone, please say hello to the one, the only, Mike Quinn. Thank you so much. Good You're to welcome. be here. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. We have talked. <laughs> Finally, right? Yes, we have talked for a while about doing this. I'm so happy yeah. that we are doing this. Me too. Thank you. Yeah. Of course. So, we're going to start with a pretty cliche question. Okay. First of all, you are a performer, you're a puppeteer, you do a lot of different things, but what first inspired you to get into performing in general or just what it, and how how old were you when you decided to start doing that like where you said i'm going to take this on as a career how old were you yeah as a career um i would say i was about 13 14 maybe 14 i, I kind of decided that's what i wanted to do but i did do performing when i was about seven or eight years old as well mm -hmm. with a little puppet show and a magic show that i had so uh, that i would do in parks and live and i'd go to auditions for the BBC and whoever, talent shows and that kind of thing. I wasn't really very good though, so <laughs> and I was a bit shy, you know, so I, I didn't, I guess that's why I like to hide behind the puppets. Um, so, so I was interested in, in performing at that point, but I was just almost too shy to perform at that stage. So, so I got into drawing and Disney things and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until the Muppet Show came along in 1976 that I really kind of got excited about puppets again and, and thought, oh, you know, how does this stuff work? How are they doing these things? How are they working them? How are they building them? Uh, what's going on here? So I really started to obsess about that and then kind of I was hooked and that's what I wanted to do. I was like, I'm going to be a puppet guy and that's it. Great. So. That's awesome. So you first got involved with the Muppets because you were lucky enough to actually go visit the set of the Muppet Show. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, that's so right. Tell me about how that came about. How were you so lucky to get to be able to not just get to a tour but visit? <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I guess they didn't really have tours as such but friends of people that worked there would um, uh, were able to visit. So and at the beginning my, my dad uh, he was working for a company that w had some involvement in providing uh, ATV studios with with some stuff, so so my initial visit was was in through there, and then um, after that I just kind of kept coming back on my own and <laughs> um, uh, uh, bribing my way past security. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd get on a bus for uh, there was a bus that used to go from the end of my street to outside the studio, mm -hmm. and it was like a, a, a twenty five minute bus ride, you know, door to door. I mean, what are the odds of that happening? That's crazy. Isn't I know. It? So uh, I would, uh, I would. Uh, it was in the last year of school, and they would have these things that they would call work experience in England. Mm. I don't know what you call it here, but, but. Um, so I would, I would take the day off and and go visit the studio on a regular basis and uh, for the whole day. And, <laughs> and, they, and they bought it. They were like, oh, puppets. Yeah, okay. yeah. And they, they, yeah, they were glad to get rid of me at the school anyway. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, just stay away. Don't come back. Uh, and, and so they, they got to know me basically, uh, you know, I'd, I'd visit on, on the, the guest star days, mm -hmm. um, saw a lot of the great stars there as well. First one was Linda Carter. I oh, wow. Well. And the last one was Gene Kelly, the very final show that they shot. So uh, yeah, so they got to know me, I was a regular and, mm -hmm. and uh, it kind of went on from there. I was still at school, uh, I finished school the same time Muppet Show finished in fact, gotcha. in the summer of 1980. Mm. And then they began the Great Muppet Caper directly afterwards. Yeah. That actually leads me into my next question, which is going to be, um, so from, to my knowledge, the Great Muppet Caper was the very first like official Muppet <clears throat> slash professional puppeteering gig that you it was, had, yeah. right? So again, tell me about how you got that gig. <laughs> yeah, how did I get that? Well, um, yeah, I, I, I left school and I thought, okay, I want to work for the Muppets. I'm not tall enough to be a puppeteer because those guys are all, you know, 15 feet tall and that kind of thing. <laughs> so I thought, well, because uh, I always read that you had to be tall, had to have a long arm, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, well, at least I can be a, a Muppet builder or a puppet builder, perhaps, you know. And I'd, I'd, I'd already built a bunch of puppets uh, that I'd also brought to the studio. And Jim Henson had put some of them on um, during Muppet Show and, and operated them, which was kind of cool. So uh, they, yeah, they, they started on the uh, Great Muppet Caper on location, and this one day, and in fact, it's almost uh, yeah, it was September because it was Jim's birthday, 
Oh, okay. So what is that? September twenty fourth? Is I, that it? I think so. Yeah, that all sounds right. about right. You guys will know. Yes. You guys know. Right so, in the comments, <laughs> they were right or yeah, not. Yes, so we're almost there now, as as of this recording. Uh, and they were filming the scene in uh, Haddenham Village, in uh, which was when the, the in the Great Muppet Caper, the, the uh, they they uh, they get released from their plane in those boxes into the pond, and they land in the pond. Mm -hmm. So with the Robert Morley scene, yeah, <clears throat> and they were filming that. And uh, so I finally found where they were on location. It took me the whole day to get on a bunch of trains and buses to finally get out to the middle of the countryside. <laughs> Wasn't driving or anything. The yet. Muppet Stalker. <laughs> yeah, the original Muppet yes. Stalker, probably. <laughs> the original Walter, I think. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I finally found it. Was, they, yeah, they had like the last day of uh, the last hour, I think, left to film. And I watched that. And at the end of the day, uh, because it was Jim Henson's 53rd, no, no, not 50, 40th birthday. Mm -hmm. 40th birthday and they were giving him birthday cards. And I had my little job application in an envelope <laughs> to give him, <laughs> coincidentally. I love that, that's <laughs> and great. So at the end of the day, here, this is for you, uh, Mr. Hanson or whatever he was called back then, frog dude. Mm -hmm. And he's oh, thank you very much, you know, <laughs> took it and I think, so he probably thought it was a birthday card. Yeah. Um, but like two weeks later, I got a call from David Laser, the exec producer saying, hey, you know, we'd like to have you on the movie for a week. Uh-huh, and a you puppeteer. just went, yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, wow, I mean, it's just ridiculous. You know, how, how can that happen, really? You know, wow. a kid from nothing from the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. um, that don't even have an American accent. How can I be working Muppets mm -hmm. on a film? You know, the second film. Hey, it's a British so, film, it will make it work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, d I did go to the premiere of the uh, Muppet movie oh, in London, wow. the Royal World premiere. I, um, I had my pocket money and I called up Lou Grade's office and got tickets. <laughs> nice! That's fantastic. And walk the red carpet, so that was good. That's great. Uh, yeah, so so that's kind of how I got started. So they just used me for, uh, tried me out for a week. Um, the very first Muppet I ever worked was the Swedish chef hanging out of the, the uh, bus, um, the Happiness Hotel bus. Yeah, the, bi the big, yeah. like, to the, the Decker bus, right? The, yeah, exactly, and it arrives at the Dubonnet Club outside. It's an exterior shop and it, 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 it stops and there's an explosion out back. That was the very first thing we filmed. Mm -hmm. And then after that we went to Nebworth House, which was the exteriors of the Mallory Gallery, and they were night shoots. Mm -hmm. And also we did one night of driving around uh, London, um, like uh, I remember in Beauregard's taxi, mm -hmm. uh, I think they were shooting some Happiness Hotel bus stuff as well. Uh, plus, um, they had the stunt driver in a Beauregard head. <laughs> oh, in okay. In a little yellow taxi, and I was in the back doing Kermit and Gonzo, mm -hmm. doing both. And they were just, I remember there's a shot where it drives past Harrods. And uh, we were going through all this real traffic, you know, and these guys in these cars on, on that night would look over and see Beauregard driving a taxi with Kermit and Gonzo in the <laughs> back, and they, they just couldn't believe what they were seeing. Can you imagine seeing that thing? <laughs> if, I, if this was the 80s, I'd be like, what? Yeah. Yeah. If I saw that now, I'd be like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. If it was the eighties, I'd be like, Oh, oh, it's still the eighties. Never mind. Then, I know, you know, right? So, so yeah. So that was my first, my first uh, week, and then they just kind of kept extending me from that, I guess. And so I never really auditioned. Mm -hmm. Um. But, but that was Jim. You know, he sort of had that, that way of seeing potential in people and giving them a, a chance. Mm -hmm. Basically, he had that that quality. That's wonderful. So. So I am curious, I think you're gonna say no, but I just wanted to be sure because I couldn't find in my research. You didn't actually do any work on the Muppet Show, right? Or did you? Almost yes and almost no. That's an interesting question oh, okay. because the Muppet Show itself technically the answer is no, mm -hmm. but they they went into that environment, that studio and used those sets one more time. Do you remember what that was for? I don't know. What there was a special called The Muppets Go to the Movies, which was oh. an hour long special. Uh, in the, uh, it was a Muppet Show special right. called The Great Muppet Caper. So they did little film vignettes. So I actually, um, I sort of wasn't officially on it, but because I'd been, I was across the street building Podlings and Slaves on the Dark Crystal, and mm -hmm. I thought, well, they're having fun across the road to, at the TV studio, and I'd just go in there and watch and shoot. And then before I knew it, I was the back of a of sop with camel, <laughs> and uh, and then doing two frogs with uh, um, Lily Tomlin. Yeah, and, uh, we'll meet again at the end. That then it sounds like they could have been like, oh hey, you're here, just yeah. just throw him in. That was the the Muppet way back then. Aww. So I so I sort of I actually did get to work on in those sets and in that studio that one time before it uh, got struck and 
and uh, turned into the BBC. Ah, okay. So sort of yes. So sort, sort of, of yes, sort of no. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Which would have been my first TV thing, I think, actually. Oh, okay. Interestingly. Oh, enough. yeah, that's true. Cause so Muppet Caper would have been your first yeah. movie. That would have been so, your first TV yeah. experience. Uncredited, but. Yeah. Hmm. But it's still experience. Good question. Thank you. <laughs> All <laughs> right. So, so now I want to know. Um, tell me exactly what your role has been. Um, performing with the Muppets over the years? Because of course you've done this for a lot of years since the early yeah. 80s and of course I'm sure it's changed. You've done lots of different characters. You've played you've played a lot of different roles. But tell me overall like what your job has been as far as being a Muppet performer. For the, for the uh, known Muppet characters themselves, it's funny, it's gone full circle. You know, now and, and with the Muppet series and the, the last few movies and, and what we're doing now, I'm pretty well doing exactly what I did, you know, 37 years ago in, in 80. I'm assisting uh, the main characters and doubling up for the principals, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, so it, yeah, and, and, and background penguins, pigs, chickens, and the usual stuff, but also also principals in, in, in uh, wide shots and, and that kind of thing. So when one of the main performers is, is in one of their characters, they'll have people like myself be in their other character and they'll switch back and forth. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of mostly, you know, what I do. I'm one of the utility guys. Um, and you kind of have to be able to do everything. And, but one of the regular guys. Yeah, you kind of yeah. have to mimic um, the principal characters and the way they hold their hand inside the head for certain characters. You kind of have to make them look right. And, and each performer has their own uh, kinetics, their own dynamics with how they perform. So you sort of have to be able to copy that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of interesting as well. And then for the n other non-Muppet characters, but other other shows like um, Secret Life of Toys or Mother Goose, that kind of thing, then then it would be a different, I'd have my own characters or Fathom, the Ghost of Fathom Hall, that right. kind of thing. Right, the more smaller so, production. <clears throat> yeah, then yeah. I'd have a lot more of my own characters. Very cool. Um, so those those would be a little bit different, but um, yeah, so nice. 37 years, it's ridiculous. <laughs> 37 it's years? Crazy. Wow. 37 years. <laughs> So, not long after you worked on The Great Muppet Caper, you also worked on the cult classic The Dark Crystal, but right. you didn't just perform in it, like you said, you also did some building for it. So yeah. So, tell me about that. Oh, that was great. Um, uh, it, basically, Bobby Payne, who was uh, one of the original Muppet builders, he worked on Sam and Friends, mm -hmm. and I think he went to school with Jim Henson, actually. Oh, okay. Um, and he was popped here on Sesame Street, and I, I guess... Uh, so he was around uh, the Muppet workshop, in the, I know certainly in the last season of The Muppet Show. So he remembered seeing me bring in these puppets that I'd made as a kid mm -hmm. at school and stuff. So um, the, the Dark Crystal was, of course, being uh, created simultaneously as we were filming The Great Muppet Caper. So uh, basically whenever we weren't, people like myself weren't needed for filming on Muppets in, in those scenes, I'd be at the Hampstead workshop uh, building. So Bobby Payne hired me as his assistant to, to construct all these bodies for the potlings and slaves and, and create the celastic skulls for the, for the foams to glue on and cut out the, the, trim all the hands and feet and the toes and fingers, put, put wire in them so they could, could bend and, mm -hmm. and uh, build mouth interiors inside and that kind of thing. So, and uh, build limbs, arms and legs as well. So about a hundred in total. Wow. Um, 50 of each and then a few special effects ones, some marionettes mm -hmm. and of course the uh, the slaves who had their, their essence strained where their eyes would go milky and their skin would suck in. <laughs> so they'd be special effect ones we'd, we'd create for them. So yeah, it was really nice. It was a great creative time and, and the in it was so interesting because we would film the great scenes for the great Muppet Cape and then we would do tests after the, at the end of the day for the Dark Crystal oh, film wow. test. So you're practically working on it simultaneously almost. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And certainly Jim and those guys absolutely were. And then we'd, we'd see the rushes, the, you know, the dailies uh, from the day before in the, in the theatre mm -hmm. of the Great Muppet Caper. And then when those were out of the way, then we'd get to see the good stuff with all the tests, with all the, the, the Dark Crystal uh, environmental creatures and paint, wow. paint tests, costume tests, lighting tests, that kind of thing. So it was a really um, crazy creative time you know, where we were discovering and learning. Because uh, that kind of thing hadn't been done before, you know. We really hadn't. We'd had Yoda in Empire Strikes Back, and that was about all. We'd, we'd had a, a foam creatures, animatronics, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. There was no ET, there was nothing. So we had to figure a lot of this stuff out. And you know? from what I understand, basically everything on camera in that movie is like all handmade, basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah, everything's in camera. I mean, yeah, no CG, of course, and very a little bit of compositing at the end but that was all sort of again before computers and there wasn't really any blue screen as such then mm -hmm. you know 
Um, so everything was pretty well in camera. Just you know, matte glass paintings, matte paintings, of mm -hmm. course, which you don't have anymore. Not so much so. anymore. <laughs> if you go visit the old studios, you can see them. Yeah. But not so much being used. Yeah. So nice. uh, yeah, it was a really great time. Nice. I learned so much. Now, I've noticed on Facebook you do a lot of traveling, and sometimes, yeah, that's probably all thanks to arguably your most famous character. Nine Num, please tell me I'm saying that right. Nine Num. Nine Num, yeah, close Nine enough. Num. Yeah, sorry, in, there's no right or wrong. Yes. But Nine Num, yeah. In yeah. the Return of the Jedi, which you puppeteered on, and um, yeah. but this character's also appeared in the Force Awakens in uh, the Last Jedi. Yes. So again, the next Last Jedi. Yes. <laughs> um, so tell me, <laughs> how freaking cool was it to work on a Star Wars film? Just oh. in general, because that, I mean, Star Wars was already a thing at that point. It was already a thing by Return of the Jedi, so it was really exciting walking onto the set and, uh, you know, I wanted to see what happened in the in the third installment of the trilogy, but, you know, here, here, here's everybody in there, you know, here's Luke as a Jedi and here's, here's uh, you know, Han coming out of Carbonite and mm -hmm. it's like, wow, I get to see this unfold in, you know, in real life, mm -hmm. you know, and of course couldn't say anything uh, for, until the film was released. Right. So. But it was fantastic, you know, as a fan, of course, it was brilliant. And then to be a part of that was just uh, amazing. And then Frank uh, pulled me in to help with Yoda because he, he knew I'd, what, what my work was like helping him with things like Fozzie and doing right hands for that stuff. So mm -hmm. so I got to, to, you know, Yoda I just loved anyway. So to be a part of that, the Jedi was was, uh, was a real gift as well. Yeah. Um, and tell, so me about, yeah. tell me about how um, the puppet um, Nine Num works. Because I don't, I, I'm assuming it's kind of a hand puppet, but it takes a couple of people to work that puppet, doesn't it? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, I mean, essentially, I mean, he, he started out as, as just a, a thick rubber mask, essentially. He was a static background character. Uh, that didn't have any um, uh, movement or anything, uh, and he was just worn by, uh, it was, you know, he was an extra essentially, mm -hmm. uh, or a chorus girl as I like to call him, <laughs> who was waiting for his moment. But, um, so it was kind of like a thick urethane foam that sort of held itself and then with it, it sort of had a latex skin on the outside, so it was pretty robust and they had two of those. Um, and then part way into the film, George Lucas knew that he needed uh, a a, sort of a co-pilot for Lando and the Falcon. Mm -hmm. So, and I guess he wanted an alien, something a bit more interesting, and he, he obviously liked the look of, of Nine Numb. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, I think he decided, okay, let's have that guy be the co-pilot. Um, he, he didn't really have a performer as such at that point in time. And I was always hanging around the Phil Tippett creature <laughs> shop, because uh, I was, you know, a nerd. Mm -hmm. And. Um, <laughs> And he was telling Phil was telling me this, and he said, and then now they they got to, they're going to give him dialogue, and he has no moving parts, and what are we going to do? Uh, you know, maybe we'll give him some sort of oxygen mask, and then we won't see that his his mouth doesn't move. Maybe put bladder in the cheeks, and mm, that will look like he's talking. I'm glad that they. I, I love. I don't know. I just love watching yeah. that puppet. Well, mm, it's that's not one. very good. Uh, <laughs> so I, I took one of the the masks and and found that I could put my hand inside, and sort of I showed him how you can. He kind of make the mouth move. So mm -hmm. what if we fitted this out as a hand puppet? And I kind of showed him. Uh, so we could build a little little padding in here, and and um, you know maybe we could add some eye blinks and that kind of thing. So he said, you know, that's a really interesting idea. Uh, do you want to mock uh, just a hand puppet up and put some shoulders on him, you know, and, and sort of work the hand like a live hand? And just uh, uh, we ended up doing a film test with him uh, f with George Lucas. And so there was the extra in the the other mask, uh -huh. and then me next to him in real time with the hand puppet, and he just oh, and George cool. Lucas directed that just as a film test, mm -hmm. um, and told us to look around and do things and all that kind of stuff. And that's when I said, yeah, you know, we can we can perhaps put in some eye blinks in him and then wiggle his ears, which you <laughs> see you see more from the back when they're going into hyperspace. You see his ears going like this. Oh, I don't think I ever noticed that. Yeah, so now I gotta go back and watch yeah, it. Yeah, you gotta look at that. You see more from the back. Yeah. You see him go, <laughs> That so, is awesome. Um, so, uh, so that's what happened. So I kind of got myself the job um, by being being around, I guess. Just being around. <laughs> um, so that's how it happened. Yeah. So he was essentially a big muppet, and I was laying flat on my back in the Falcon uh, with a little monitor, monitor, little six-inch black and white mm -hmm. monitor, and microphone doing guide dialogue. 
Yeah. And that was it. Cool. And I had my hand inside his other hand on the steering yoke, and his left hand was stuffed. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, so he was a Muppet, really. He was a Muppet, which is why I had that mm -hmm. little nod at the end when they. That's when right. They, I know. I, I always thought of it. He's got kind of like the little Ralph it's a Muppet nod. Yeah, but the 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 Muppet nod or yeah. the Muppet laugh, as I like to call it, because yeah. like. And that's what it was. It was a <laughs> default thing, and that became a thing for him as well. Now people say, "Hey, do the laugh," and I'm like, "What laugh?" What are you about? <laughs> so yeah, that's there you go. Yeah. So I want to know. You have also puppeteered on Fraggle Rock, um, but oh, yes. from what I found, you actually did an interesting role on that show. You played um, Gobo and Traveling Matt, who of course were already played by Jerry Nelson and Dave Gold, respectively. Yeah. But you did some different segments. Tell me about that. What was yeah. The so, of that? so Jim's vision for Fraggle Rock was to have a lot of co-productions, so that each each uh, Sprocket section, Sprocket the dog, would be. Um, uh, filmed in different countries uh, with different actors uh, and sometimes in different languages. So we ended up um, doing uh, one in the UK uh, and that was a, instead of a, a, an inventor, instead of Doc the Inventor, it was a lighthouse keeper. Um, and then there was another one in Germany, done in German, mm -hmm. um, and that was a copy of the original Canadian set and scripts. Um, and then in France it was a retired chef mm -hmm. and they were new, new scripts. So, so um, so they were f uh, f uh, taped in the original languages, in their languages. But uh, I did Sprocket, I, I assisted Dave Barkley with, with some of the Sprockets in the UK and then did some of the Gobos coming through the hole getting the postcard mm -hmm. and some Uncle Travelling Mats in the UK. And then in France I did some Gobo and Uncle Matt a little bit, yes. And, and I did, I don't remember how many episodes of, of Croquette the dog he was called in France. I also performed him there in some episodes. It's a French Croquette. Croquette, Croquette. <laughs> croquette. <laughs> And then in, in Germany, I did 12 episodes with Sprocket the dog as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I got to perform all three of those in three different countries, um, which was, so it went on for years. You know, we did the same episode three times over. And yeah. So, oh, this is the one where Gobo has to carry the, that postcard and, the, and he has a special hat on and, you know, everything had to, be, had to match, essentially. Mm -hmm. so, That's awesome. Yeah. Now, something else I want to ask you, a lot of people who know your work probably don't know this, but you've also worked a little bit in animation and visual effects. Uh, to my knowledge, you've done uh, animation for Jurassic Park 3, um, for Bugs Life, and for Toy Story 2. Mm -hmm. And then you also did some visual effects for um, the uh, Attack of the Clones. That's correct. Yeah. yeah so... and, and some uh, animated some Hershey's Kisses, too. Oh, you did? Some okay. That doesn't show up on IMDb, but right. okay. But again, tell, that's <laughs> unusual for someone who didn't go to animation school. Again, tell me how that came about. Yeah, the, well, at that point in time, it was just post Toy Story and there weren't really any any CG animation schools uh, there were no no way you, you could go to learn that stuff at that point in time because it was so new mm -hmm. it wasn't really a career as such <laughs> at that point in time Pixar were the only people pretty well doing that mm -hmm. and they just done one movie and that was it so then they 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 knew at that point they were going to do Toy Story 2 and a bug's life and that they were going to have to scale up and uh, ramp up production so uh, Pixar went headhunting and um, I was still in the UK at the time um, but I was, I'd been looking at, at, at computers to, to hide puppeteers and, and paint out rods and, mm -hmm. and I was even doing some more things, making a puppet wink that couldn't wink and that sort of stuff. Oh, okay. So <clears throat> I was kind of really interested in what the technology could do at that, at that point. So this would be, you know, mid nineties. So 97, and I'd go to the, uh, the computer fairs and then the, and the industry movie uh, special effects fe festivals in London and stuff and Digital Domain and all these other whatever companies were around at the time But Pixar were there too and um, they they decided that uh, they could teach puppeteers to, to animate because puppeteers already knew to act mm -hmm. and it would be easier doing that than, than, than the other way around and finding an animator and making sure that they could act or something so so uh, they were they were all over it and, and uh, recruited me for Toy Story 2 essentially so I came over in yeah in 1997 to uh, Northern California mm -hmm. and went through a uh, Pixar University which I think was like a 12-week animation intensive Pixar sort of internal class mm -hmm. and uh, came out of that and, and said yep we're gonna give you a job. Nice. And that was it. <laughs> so then I moved, I sold my house and moved all my stuff over. And to sunny California. Yep. To, I to, guess up there it was probably not as sunny, but Yeah, still. <laughs> to sunny and rainy and foggy San Francisco. <laughs> 
All right, so now we're going to go into fan territory, just real quickly. I'm curious, yeah. as a Muppet fan, because you're clearly a huge fan, not just a performer. I am, yeah, I still am. It's yeah. funny that, isn't it? So what is your personal favorite Muppet project or movie or just really anything that was produced by Jim Henson or is just Muppet, even if it's something you did not work on? Um, yeah. Just anything over the years, and even post-Jim Henson, any of that. <clears throat> yeah. I was just curious what your favorite There's so much. Um... Yeah, it depends on what, what what part of the brain I go into. I mean, I've always enjoyed uh, doing the, the you know the musical songs and the, the classics and that kind of stuff. The, the Muppets and music always seem to just really go well together. They're always so much fun to perform, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I mean, I have a lot of memories. I mean, uh, you know, I loved the original Muppet movie uh, because it just totally broke the mold. You know, the Muppets were out in the real world and looking, you know, seeing Kermit, seeing that camera go through the swamp and find Kermit on that log yeah. in the middle of nowhere. It's just pure, pure magic. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, there are so many memories. Uh, one that always comes to mind, Jim, Jim liked to play a lot, you know, on set. Because I, I guess, he, he, you know, he, there was a part of him that had, was a businessman and he had to, he had to deal with, with uh, much like Kermit with the Muppets, he had to deal with all his people and keeping them wrangled and in, and in check. and. And there was that responsibility of, he wanted people to be happy. He wanted them to, to have jobs and to enjoy themselves and have work. Um, so I think he felt the burden of that. But then when he could get on set, he could just leave all that behind, put a puppet on and just start playing, you mm -hmm. know, and singing with it. And it was, it didn't, it never took much to get him to kind of play and, and get off track and forget that he was supposed to be making a <laughs> show or whatever. But I remember we were doing, um, the uh, Muppet Home videos, which were like little uh, links for Muppet Show clips, and mm -hmm. there was a whole bunch of them. And there was one, I think it was in uh, Kermit's in the attic or something, and Kermit and Fozzie were picking up various props. Hey, remember this? And you know, oh yeah, we used that on this episode, and then it would link into the clip of the episode. Mm -hmm. But there, <clears throat> there was this one time where I don't remember what what caused it, but it was just Jim and Frank, and they just started getting the giggles and cracking <laughs> each other up. And Jerry Jewell was the writer there. It was like just a handful of people. It was just like a one set, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and they just started laughing and laughing and getting worse and worse, tears rolling down their cheeks. They, they were just having the best time. They were like six-year-old kids again. It was just the greatest thing ever to see that, that pure joy of puppets, mm -hmm. you know, of doing what they loved, yeah. what they had created. And to witness that, you know, uh, was, was a real gift. And it, it always stayed with me. That's wonderful. <laughs> now we actually, I did actually want to go into Jim Henson a bit. Yeah, obviously fine. you worked a lot with him. Yeah. He unfortunately has been <clears throat> gone for since 1990. Um, but I was just curious at you personally, as someone who's known Jim Henson, you know, as a friend and a mentor and everything, like yeah, who, who was. was Jim Henson to you personally? Yeah, um, he started out as being this big guy uh, uh, who did Kermit and who, who was a hero. But then, um, you know, he, he, he very quickly made people, that, put people at ease, you know, and he would treat people as an equal and he, 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 re he always respected whoever was next to him, whether they had experience or not. Um, and he, 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 was a, he was a very uh, a gentle mentor too, you know, he was very kind. He wouldn't ever really criticize, like, you know, why are you doing that? That looks terrible. You know, what, what, are you, what are you thinking? He never said that, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd say, hmm, what? Why don't you try that? How about trying this? You know, it was it was a very much more encouraging, um, open kind of uh, 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 environment that he created for everybody. Um, and uh, you know, we'd have he'd, he'd create these banquets for people. Uh, we'd have so we'd have meals with him in various castles and places. <laughs> uh, I remember going to. He took me once to see. Uh, uh, Abratsov, the Russian puppeteer, he was performing in London, so oh. he took me along uh, next to him. So I got to, to meet him as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's, oh, this is Michael, one of our puppeteers, you know. <laughs> it was great. So he was just this this giving um, guy who was just enjoying his his life and wanted to share that with everybody, everyone, you know. Um, he was very generous uh, and uh, he, yeah, he loved to throw parties. And, mm -hmm. And uh, always, yeah, it, it was always just nice to be around him. I mean, I, I was always, he was always Jim, you know, the Jim, the, the hero guy, that's the thing. But, so I was always in awe of him, uh, no matter what. But, but um, 
but he was also, you know, a, a co-worker, a mentor. He was he was a father figure to a lot of people as well. I'm not sure if he really wanted to be that, mm -hmm. but by the nature of who he was in relationship to everyone, there was that element. Um, but uh, he was he was all those things that you think he would be, you know, that yeah. you hear about. Um, he, and I think there was a lot of him in Kermit in trying to hold everyone together and make sure they all behave themselves mm -hmm. and keep them on track, you know. Yeah. I think he felt that burden. That's just my feeling on it. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. And I can only imagine, you know, when he went, it was kind of sudden. Was it? It, it was, yeah. I was directing a, um, a puppet show that uh, my company were, were uh, working on and uh, in London. And uh, yeah, the phone call came through and it's like, you're kidding, right? It's like, that's a joke. No. So then we all got on a plane and went to New York and, and had to deal with it, you know. We've never been the same since. I don't think we ever recovered. I don't think you ever fully recover from that. Mm -hmm. you just do do the best you can and and do what uh, what we think he would he would like and <clears throat> want us to do. Um, I I do feel he would have approved of many things that we have done and are doing. Um, uh, I. Also, he, I feel Jim would just be happy that we're all working, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, oh good, you got a job, great, you know, because <laughs> that's kind of how he was. Mm -hmm. But I, and I think that the Hollywood Bowl would be something that he would be really excited about because he was interested in, in doing live performances. I know he was always talking about doing something on Broadway. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a big step towards that. So I think he would be behind this. So you've done so much for the Muppets. You've worked with them since the beginning, practically since at least the beginning of the Muppet Show. You've been around. You've been there since the beginning. You've done stuff for the movies. You've done a lot of stuff for the works of Jim Henson in the '80s, and you've done a lot post Jim Henson. I guess what I want to know is, you know, and you've also done Star Wars, <laughs> uh, which is like a dream come true for any nerd. <laughs> um, what career goals do you have left at this point? Is there anything else you want to achieve? Anyone you want to work with? Just what sticks in your mind is something you still want to make sure happens yeah there's a lot uh, I'm realizing now I'm not gonna have enough years left to do what I want to do but <laughs> yeah I have uh, you know there's some some characters I want to build and perform uh, some some shows I want to put together there are a few film ideas that I have as well um, uh, there's also some work I want to try with different kinds of puppets as well not not just that same Muppet kind of thing but with an, uh, other styles of puppetry and other other using other materials uh, as well so uh, you know, I have outlines and, and things written for that. There's a lot of yeah, a lot of projects I want to do, um, and collaborate uh, with with other other people. I'd like to be able to create uh, work for others as well, and I'd like to see careers be launched. I'd like to see a, a, a light go on in someone that went on inside me. You know, if I could if I could do that somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, that would make me very happy. So, uh, which is sort of why I'm doing the uh, Secrets of Puppetry uh, cl online classes that are coming up soon and I can get them online and ready um, to, to pass on what I had learned mm -hmm. uh, from, those, from, from that golden era from those days, both with the, the Muppet kind of thing and the, the creature uh, performing um, and uh, strip everything back to the, the bare bones, literally start at day one. You know, how, what, how, how can your hand turn that way but not that way? So mm -hmm. how do you get the puppet to, to tilt when your wrist won't do it? And just like all the basic stuff, what are your bones doing? How do you stand? Um, so go right back to the beginning and inject some of the stuff I've learned from animation as well, which has helped my puppetry. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I want to build, build out this course that will hopefully inspire people uh, to either just do it as a, a fun hobby or, uh, or a semi-professional or take it all the way and become the, the best in, in, in their field um, and actually have careers doing that stuff. <clears throat> so I want to, to, to help that uh, in, a, in a more uh, uh, attainable way without having to, to, not everyone can go to a, a college. I mean, when I started, there was nowhere to learn this stuff anyway. Right. That's the thing, there was nothing. So I kind of self-taught a little bit and learned on the job, made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I still make a lot of mistakes. We all do. That's fine. So, but I want to, I want to be able to pass that on as well and, and, uh, and help, in, uh, help usher in a new generation and show them that, that, that they can actually have a career doing this and they can have fun. And there's a lot of stuff that hasn't been done yet. That's the thing. You know, we, we think, okay, there's creatures, there's Muppets, you know, but, but that's just one part of what can be done and what has been done. There's just so much stuff yet 
so many new characters that haven't been born. You know, mm -hmm. I get yeah. excited about that. Uh, new stories to be told in, in new ways. Um, you know, now, I mean, look, you know, you have your own channel. Yeah. I mean, imagine, <laughs> even, look, well, 10 years ago, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, 2005 um, is when YouTubers launched, so yeah. YouTubing as a career was not even really a thing until a few years after yeah. that. So. so, but that's the thing, you know, and, and people could do this for puppets too. They could build up their audience, they could monetize it, they could get sponsorships, they could, they could uh, 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 get uh, subscriptions, mm -hmm. uh, possibly. There's different ways that people can actually now create their own show, just like like Rachel's now, <laughs> and um, and actually have a, a career. You know, uh, to me that's very exciting, and bring a few other people along for the ride. Yeah, you know? I mean, what a great thing. So we're, I think we're in a really good time now. I'm really excited that, that we've come to this place, mm -hmm. uh, and that I've come to this place in my career where I can start, I can build out my own little studio, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, and, and actually do stuff that hopefully can look and sound good and be funny and entertaining. Anybody can do that if, 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 if the passion and the will is there. Mm -hmm. uh, the information's out there now to, you know, you can learn how to do sound and video and lighting and, and uh, composition and, and all that kind of thing. You can learn how to build puppets, you can learn how to puppeteer. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can learn how to, to sing, how to act. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do to a degree online now, you know, cheaply mm -hmm. or relatively cheaply. So, so uh, the rest is, there aren't any excuses anymore. You yeah, know? it's kind of like, you know, it's out there now. You can yeah. go find it, do it. Um, yeah, and great, everybody can do it, but you can still be better than most if you, if, if you really focus and, and and they're serious about it, you know. I mean, yeah, you know, there's, there can be a lot of bad stuff out there, and that's fine. But you're still going to be, if you spend, um, you know, a day a week or, or five hours a week uh, focusing on, on learning something and getting good at, at what you want to do, you're still going to be better than probably 99% of everyone else out there doing, wanting or trying to do exactly the same thing. Right. So you can still, the cream will always rise to the top. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, so, so I'm really excited about the future. I feel we're entering a new chapter now, a new era. We are. Um, and it's not about waiting for the phone to ring to get a, a job. We yeah. can now make our own jobs. We can make our own work and, yeah. and, and have fun doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm really excited. I mean, I, yeah. yeah, I could answer this question for days yeah. and probably just did. Only the future will tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, thank you so much for getting together and discussing all of this with me. It's thank been you. awesome. It. Everyone, this has been an interview with Mike Quinn. Please join us again next time for another Muppet Monday episode. We'll see you guys next time. Mwah. Say Bye. goodbye. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.